It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable time. And as always, I have a great group of DJs here. And uh, I also a DJ assistant who uh, likes to dance and have fun and play jokes on her uh, DJ dad. And was He's his also assistant. a great blackjack player. I, I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> I saw her playing some cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw her having some fun there. So, oh, yeah. hopefully you enjoyed yourselves at uh, Midwest DJs Live there in uh, beautiful Milwaukee. Um, it was definitely worth it. Good. And also, uh, we want to uh, say a couple things here. First thing first, if you have any current criticisms, critiques, comments, please go down below and you know, talk about it down below, chat, chat, uh, say something, ask questions. If you want to see someone on the round table, again, we've had other DJs come in here, uh, ask. You know, we, you know, we try to get some other people in here, and uh, hopefully we'll get DJ Rachel uh, back in here again uh, very soon. I've been talking to her, uh, just trying to line schedules up, especially she's traveling, and <laughs> she has uh, a lot of gigs, so... It comes that time of the year, it, it's harder and harder and harder, uh, especially with uh, a lot of the shows coming up, and she has a lot of things she has to go to. Uh, but she will be here in Chicago, and uh, I'm hoping to catch up with her and her other half and have some dinner with uh, the two of them and uh, some other DJs. So if you're coming to Marquee Show, uh, make sure you go into uh, Instagram, hit me up on Instagram, tell me you're coming. And uh, tell me who you are, and if you're coming here, uh, we'll uh, we'll figure out how many people we can have at a restaurant, and we'll all go there. And uh, again, you guys can buy your own food, but I will uh, make sure you guys know an address of a great uh, Chicago pizza place or a great Chicago. Um, well, we'll have a couple of things: Italian beef, hot dog stand. There's a lot of places, so we'll have to see and figure out what we're going to do. But it'll be something that's quintessential Chicago. The other thing also, I want to say happy birthday to DJ Cool Thing. He is not here tonight because he is out celebrating his birthday with his family. We want to thank you and celebrate your birthday here. And, you know, we want to say happy birthday to you, man. Uh, we wish you were here, bro, but enjoy it with your family and enjoy it with everyone there. And uh, make sure that uh, uh, you stay safe and we see you back here in the not too distant future um and when you come back next time we're going to sing happy birthday to you uh what's going on man how are you doing i'm seeing the chat here as well i'm reading the chat if you're here live on twitch make sure you ask questions live of the group we're here to answer some questions hopefully we have some answers for you as always we have a few uh questions hey hey dina blend how you doing sir um Hopefully you're enjoying yourself too out there in, down there in Australia and you're living in the future because it is uh, Wednesday for you versus it's still Tuesday for us. Uh, he's on his lunch break. <laughs> oh, bon appetit. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice uh, delicious lunch and uh, not working too hard there and uh, keeping cool down there in Australia. Uh, it's still a little cool here in Chicago. We're in uh, the 40s here, uh, lower 40s, and we used to have a freeze warning, so... We're going to get a little cool here. Uh, but, you know, it's like anything else. It's life in the Midwest. It's spring. Uh, i got to love it. Uh, one other thing also, uh, make sure you click that like button and smash that uh, that subscribe button down there. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to us here on Twitch and uh, enjoy. And, oh, uh, Mr. Maui, how are you doing? Um uh, do you guys have any you know, recommendations or words of caution using power packs like a Jackery for wedding ceremonies? We will talk about that in a little bit. Um, no. Jackeries, uh, again, like any battery operate item, again, is one of the things that you always have to watch. Uh, no overcharging and stuff like that. But everyone I know, uh, they talk very highly of them. There's a couple other ones. Uh, Howie Darkstar uh, did a whole breakdown. And he uses a different kind of battery pack. He's done video on it, uh, and, we, and he's talked about it in Disc Jockey News. Uh, and it's not a lithium-ion battery. It's a different kind of battery that lasts longer. Because lithium-ion has like a three- to five-year shelf life. These batteries last about ten years. 
on average. So uh, if you get a chance to go check that out. Um, and uh, I would definitely recommend it's a, a good thing to have. Uh, if one. any of you use one, do you bring a second as a backup? I'm worried that I'm out during a ceremony. You know what? I've seen DJ Rachel. I've seen DJ Rick Webb. I've seen I, Matt. I think you've done battery before, right? Yeah, I don't use those stupid jackeries though. I'm not going to pay that price. I have way better ones. <laughs> but you, you've done battery. Uh, yeah, battery I and, trust and your gig logs. Um, I fully trust it. Yes. Yeah, and it, that's one of the things that um, doing some battery for ceremonies and stuff like that, or for a whole entire wedding, you can do it and. I would definitely would say there's a lot of great brands out there. We're getting also DJ Mike James here tonight. Uh, he has opened his schedule up to come in, check out everything, and talk a little bit tonight. And uh, we're just talking really quickly, uh, Mike, about battery-operated uh, services for ceremony. Uh, we have a little question in the uh, chat. And I uh, want to start off with the first question of tonight. And this goes to uh, Hunter, who, uh, again, he is on... A little bit of a vacation or on remote or wherever you want to look at it, a special like, assignment uh, celebrating his birthday today. And uh, he's out with his family, so he is in the chat and he can answer questions as well. Uh, I was talking to him and he actually talked about this in a live stream. He had a um, customer who came to him, a client, and uh, he was talking to them for a bit. And the client went with a band. And we run into this every so often, you know, DJ versus band. And hey, what's up, Adrian E? And the thing is that I know a couple guys here who have been in bands, who are musicians and, you know, play instruments. Um, I've never been in a band, but I do know, I did take piano lessons while I was younger. I, uh, I, I played piano when I was younger and I do keyboards when I was younger. Uh, I'd love to get keyboards now and go back to it, but uh, <laughs> the boss says no. <laughs> uh, you gotta listen to the wife, but it's one of the things um, that we're looking at uh, the differences between a DJ and a band. And I want to start off, Mr. Mike James. I know you haven't been here for a little bit because, again, you're working hard and hardly working, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> With all the That's a little bit of both, you know. So what would you say would be um, some of the advantages of a DJ over a band? Well, uh, I played in a band for, I played in a cover band for eight, almost nine years, paid my bills, you know, w with that project. Um, I, I guess there's benefits to both depending on what you want your experience to be. The problem with a band is, especially cover bands, most of them, it's all rehearsed material. They have sets and playlists, not like ours in the sense of like what they've actually spent hours rehearsing and, and playing and can only do those songs. You know, so if you have a request or you have something along those lines, they're, they're not going to be able to do that. It's, it's going to be what the songs they can play. Now, are those upbeat? Are they, are they going to fill the dance floor? Are they going to, you know, are, are, is their wedding reception going to be exactly you know what they want it to be and it just it just depends whereas a dj we get to we make our sets and our playlists and we make them to rock the house and we can you know what i mean we can manipulate that as the night goes on we're full service all requests um most of the times our lighting and sound setups are way better than the bands i mean just from what i see you know from all the guys that you know that work around me and people that I follow, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a band that can hold a candle to the lighting that I've got now, you know, I mean, but just to name a few things, like I said, uh, it's, it's all about the personal experience as far as the people booking, you know, the artists per, per se, but uh, we're definitely more versatile. I mean, for sure. Okay. And that, that is very important to know some of the differences between a band and a DJ. DJ Bradley, our other musical uh, person here who can play instruments and uh, has been in a band, uh, what do you feel is a big difference between a DJ and a band? What would be the advantages of a DJ over a band? Well, obviously, you're going to have the DJ can play just about anything provided they can get their hands on it. 
So you do have the flexibility of that. One thing, you know, so, and with that, like you were saying, our setups are generally going to be better. I mean, I know what base amp I was using playing upright for 10 years in a bluegrass, man. It was a piece of garbage. It was just, yep. it was small and I could carry it around because I had the, the big thing behind me to carry around. Uh, honestly, so, we make we make better money as DJs than I yeah. ever did in a band. Oh, by far. And by far. With like playing, and I've played in a band that's done wedding or not a wedding band, but our band was hired to do a wedding. Huh. What the one thing I actually learned from that and have seen with other people who are musicians that you know don't want DJs. And that's a big thing. If you're a musician or have a lot of music in your lineage, be it family, be it friends, and you don't and this one thing a lot of musicians will have is the stigma that I've always been afraid of, that wedding singer, John Lovett's image. That still, even after going to Midwest DJs Live, I saw some of it, not a lot of it, but you still have that stigma of a DJ that's going to show up and be like that. And if you're hiring a band, be it a cover band, be it an all original band, you've had more than ample opportunity to catch them live somewhere, especially in like certain markets. Out, so for example, in Chicago, Chicago proper, you have original music. The second you leave Chicago proper, and go to the suburbs, it's cover band hell. But with that same regard, if you want to book a cover band, now you have a plethora to choose from and can go see each one of them live, see how they interact with the guests. So you you get a little bit more of an insight to the band you're hiring as opposed to hiring a DJ just on reviews and references. Now, if you're a DJ like myself who does clubs and weddings, now I can go and meet a couple. This is how I do it. You're going to hear me in this club. My set won't be very different from what I'm giving you at your reception. I'll be playing the clean versions unless you tell me otherwise. But for the most part, both musically and how I mix, I approach them the same way. A band doesn't have that capability. They have to strictly play like you were saying. What they know, they're going to have to learn songs like First Dance or any of the spotlights. They're going to have to learn those for the wedding. Plus any special requests. Now and you better have a good band, singer. Oh yeah, and you, your singer. There's yeah. one of the cross who is. I don't know why he didn't make it past. I want to say the top twenty in American Idol, but the, he plays in a couple of cover bands. But he's versatile. You don't have a lot of those singers either, so you're limited by the yeah. band you hired in so many different realms. So I would definitely say the versatility goes to the DJ. The interactiveness of a full three to five piece band or more, a DJ can't beat that. You're going to have different people, you know, a bass player locking in with somebody in the audience, making them want to dance. You'll have the singer going out there being able to be more tangible than a DJ behind her deck. So that's my thought on it. Okay. And besides that, um, what else anything else that you guys could think of that would be uh, a disadvantage of a van over a dj i i say you know, i mean i'll tell you real quick ahead. the reason i don't even play in bands anymore I'm sorry but i didn't mean to interrupt you no go ahead go ahead go ahead the reason i don't even play in bands anymore is you got to deal with musicians and if you guys know the that culture and and the and you know i mean just and i, I don't want to stereotype anything but you know i found myself for years, all we, you know, we're right there, but we just need another bass player because our guy quit, or the guy we brought in is all messed up. You know what I mean? Like it, there's there's all these other dysfunctional issues that that happen with bands, and and when you get to the performance side of it, I mean, you're you're only as good as as much as people practiced before they showed up. So as a DJ, every song's in perfect key. Every song is sung perfectly. Every song is in the right tempo. It's in the right time. You, you know, I mean, the, the advantages to being able to do that and not have to rely on anybody else is paramount to me, which is why I got, you know, part of the reason I got into DJing and just stopped playing in bands altogether. I was going to say, the things that I've, the things that I've noticed is bands require breaks a lot of times. A DJ especially when it comes to the dancing portion. Um, 
I'm not going to say that we don't require breaks, but what I am going to say is that we are able to keep on going a lot longer and stuff like that because we don't have to put as much energy, right? Like in the sense of like using our voice, using our body to sing, things like that. Um, so it's kind of just that situation, but um, ironically enough, as a non-DJ, I've attended more weddings with a band playing than an actual DJ. That's just kind of like my area, I guess. Um, the type of weddings that I've attended are very like, like country clubby, kind of like country club weddings where they have a bunch of bands and stuff like that. So, um, Mike, Mike, your Android friend is messing up again. So yeah, somebody's crackling a little bit. It's an Android. It's only Android phones do that. You gotta have an iPhone to be on the chat. Well, Matt always loves his uh, his iPhones. He uh... <laughs> because Apple products just work. They just work. I don't really like to do business with my clients if they have an Android. Oh That's man, it's it, it's true. It's very very hard to show my work and advertise properly with everything formatted correctly if they don't have an iPhone. It's very hard. I don't do business with email very much. A lot of my clients prefer to text me and they like to quickly text the pictures, videos, PDFs, all that, and not have it get all wonky in the translation between iPhone and Android, then great. If they have an Android, then I try to stick to email only because it's easier. But I don't know. Actually, I don't know, Mike left, and it might, it's still kind of crackling a little bit. I don't know. It might be a... Not me. Hey, buddy, is it your mic? No, it should be my mic. Could be. Hmm. No, it should be my mic. Uh, so... Let me mute myself. Maybe it's me. Mike will, Mike will come back in a little bit. It could be your signal, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, not hearing, I'm not hearing anything crackling, so... I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it as well, yeah, so... Where do you hear Myself, it? One at a time. I'm honestly, buddy. I think it's you. I'm just saying because yeah. it, it might be you. I don't see any noise come up on my screen, so because I'm looking at my mic and then there's nothing. There's nothing. I'm not putting any out audio output, so oh, yeah, buddy, is is you? Well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I just connected all my sound. Mike my... always use. I don't know. <laughs> hey, buddy, do you have a set of headphones that have a microphone attached to them? Because no. if so, if no, dang, I was say you can maybe plug um, them in and hope for it. No, because everything is tied here. I have to redo everything and go off, come back on. Um, so again, I, I, we're, uh, hopefully, Mike comes back in here in a second or two. Uh, anyways, uh, one of the things also, uh, Matt. Your uh, two cents on a DJ versus a band. What do you what do you think is the advantage of a DJ over a band? Well, bands are more classy. So uh, in the LA and Orange County area, where it's a very high dollar wedding market, or somewhat, um, a lot of very high end venues will have bands. And what they'll do is have an event planner that plans everything, and then she or he or she will. Uh, contract with a lighting company that'll do, you know, full venue lighting, not just up lighting and dance lighting, but full atmosphere lighting, you know, fully transform a venue. And you're not just going to stick a DJ with a table up there. So um, I've seen a lot where they'll have a, D a DJ and a band where the band will take the first hour, maybe hour and a half, two hours, and then and they'll do dinner too. And then the DJ will take over later in the night around nine or 10 o'clock. I really love when that party. happens. I love getting to merge with bands. I think it's really yeah. cool because... It's an opportunity for you kind of get the best, the best of both worlds. You get the band that's kind of like that more, I'll say like the more high energy because there's more people and they can move around and dance. There's only so much dancing a single person can do behind a DJ booth. But exactly. when the band takes their break, then the DJ has the opportunity to play songs that are classic songs that the band's not going to play, but everyone still is able to do stuff. So I think that's, it's always fun to mix with that. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, 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 I think a DJ is way more versatile, and if you're like me and have a can bring a nice, elegant setup, then I think that you give a band a run for their money. Plus, you're going to spend more of the band. So I was like, you spend know. a lot more money. Uh, and that's that's one thing I've, I've had to. I've even talked to people that were possibly like, "Yeah, we're between a band and a DJ, blah blah blah," and I was like, 
and I, and they were just saying like, hey, like why like we would love to use you, but like we also have a band option. And I was like, yeah, no, I totally get it. Bands are a lot of fun, but I was like, when it comes to pricing, you are paying for a great value with myself, but that same value with a band is going to be like five times the amount probably, because there's multiple parties involved with this band, right? I was like, most of the weddings I've attended with a band, um, they're definite wedding bands, and so they are eight plus pieces i mean eight piece bands i mean we're talking horns we're talking sh some strings even we're talking two or three different guitar players one singer two background singers one drummer i mean that's at least an eight to ten piece band right there and they do a hell of a job i mean they do fantastic but you're paying for it <laughs> easily even, you're paying for it even when our bluegrass band did weddings and it wasn't many of them but we were asking a thousand dollars a player and we were a six piece and this is Easily. 10 years ago. Yep. So at that point, now the equivalent is going to be 12 to 15K to hire a band. I've I've been to a wedding where I found out the price that they paid for the for the band. I'm down here in Texas. They hired this band out of New York, who is just a very well known band. They paid to have the band come down, do the wedding, do all of it. It was easily like, I'll just say the number, I think it was easy, like 30, 35K is what I remember the number was. It, it's, it was insane. I was like, for a wedding band, holy cow. 30, <laughs> it was nuts. And that, that's crazy because the, the metal band Anthrax 10 years ago, you it, it was a $10,000 guarantee versus X percentage. Uh, that would have been something killer to have so, somebody's wedding, but not necessarily appropriate but that pricing is insane right and what one of the, one of the things also you got to think about is this for with bands versus dj uh and mike's coming back in uh, is a volume level you bands have to play instruments have to play at a certain level you can't you can play drums kind of soft but you can't do that for every single song you can't play a guitar soft you can turn the volume down on the amplifier you can do certain things but it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be that volume level where like cocktail or dinner, bands are going to be loud. You know, and later at night, they could be pretty loud. They'd be pretty in your face. Plus, again, like, like Mike said before, they're kind of basically a cover band. They are not the original artist. So, if somebody came up to the band and say, hey, I want the newest song from Lizzo, or I want that new song um, uh, that's on there, it's, it's on TikTok or on whatever, and I want this song, whatever song that is, and they come up to the band and go, hey, I want this. Okay, great. That, that's fantastic. But that band may not have the music, may not have the sheet music, not know the lyrics, not know anything about the song because they're not dealing with it. And it's just one of the things that um, I totally believe that uh, if someone is going to go up against a band, someone's going to go looking at a band and say, hey, um, I want to uh, do this, do that, and I want to do a band over a DJ, that's up to them. But I feel a lot of times people are kind of disappointed in a lot of the bands because they like to hear the original artists a lot of times. Again, there's a lot of great, great cover bands. Uh, you know, I, I've done wedding shows and I've seen some really good wedding bands out there that can cover and do some good stuff. They have some, a good female vocalist and a good male vocalist that cover a wide range of of, to, uh, of of songs and topics, but it's still not the original artists. And depending on how that band is set up, it, they, they may ha not have a brass section so you have something like a classic chicago song i'm talking about you know chicago from the 70s where they 25, have that trumpets 54. and that brass section you don't have that in most bands and those bands you do run into that they're high dollar bands they're not you know you're talking 10 20 thousand dollars because they have a 15 or 20 piece band it, it, it's 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 like you'd find at a you know uh actual uh you know chicago concert and that's one of the things that people also don't realize is that, you know, how many people they are. And like you, like you said before, uh, Braylon, um, breaks. 
they can't constantly go. They're going to need to take breaks. So they're going to play for so long and take a break for 20, 25 minutes. And then they're going to play an iPod for the for their breaks, and it's just, like, very low volume. They're just like, oh, we're going to take a break. Be right back. And then, like, 25 minutes later. <laughs> well, again, just imagine you're on the dance floor. And I, I, I've heard people complain about that. You know, I, I actually just talked to a couple a few weeks ago. Uh, they were at a wedding. There was a band. And the band, middle of the dance floor, middle of the night, ha- took a break. You know, they, they're, they're trying to, you know, save their voices. They're trying to, you know, make sure equipment's running right. And they took a break and they turned on, you know, basically Spotify. Uh, and people were standing around and it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, also, they take a lot of space. This is true. Well, I, I know I know Matt takes space. I take some space. Uh, Brantley takes some space. Mike takes some space. Uh, Braylon takes some space. We all take some space. And, you know, because we want to have that nice with and have that nice setup and have everything you know nice wide we don't demand a stage but bands are much (laughs) yeah bands are much wider because even you get a four-piece band you have a a drum set a guitarist uh, a bass player and a keyboardist that's a lot of space it takes up a lot of space and again the people who are doing it again i give them kudos they have a lot of talent and i'm not saying anything bad against musicians i you know again they have a lot of great talent what I'm saying is that there are ways to get around a band and there's 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 ways to sell over a band. And again, one of the big things I run into is volume level and bands can't control the volume level the way we can. Nope. That's one the of the big things. Thing right a, there. The biggest thing a band is going to have to compete with in any circumstance, your instrumentation has to be as loud or as balanced to what your drummer is producing. So... And one of the rock bands I played in years ago, our drummer hit. There was no subtle nuances of what he was doing. He was spot on, but he hit. He didn't have the control that a drummer I played with 10 years after that did. And so playing in the band 10 years later with a different drummer, this drummer could control everything. It was, he was the perfect drummer. You didn't have well, to- that drives the bass up, that drives your guitars yeah. up, that drives your mics up. I mean, you you got to hit, they, and not only that, you got to stretch out floor monitors because every everybody needs their own monitor. I mean, it's a completely different PA setup than what we're yeah. running. I mean, for sure, all the microphones, all the the mixer is totally set up differently, so it's it is much more of a bigger setup. And there, you, everyone brings their own stuff too, so you may have a hodgepodge, and I've seen this before, fans. A hodgepodge of audio. So you may have one USC speaker, one EV. Someone brings in a JBL sub, then someone else brings in, you know, another sub that's an LD. Someone else brings in an Alto monitor. Someone else brings in, you know, audio, you know, uh, uh, American oh, yeah. DJ audio for a monitor. Well, I haven't, I haven't awesome. experienced, I haven't experienced that. It's usually one guy in the band has a PA already, but then he likes to take an extra cut because it's his PA. I've, I've seen that too, but I've, I've seen people. No, do that's, that's how it typically works. Hodge, hodge. And it's like, I've been, every, every, every has their own band. little stuff and they have their own little parts. Now, the few wedding bands that have been at celebrations when I've been in a different room, because one, celebrations, you're paying a pretty penny to get there, but most of the cover bands or wedding bands that I've seen are paying for a sound person also. So, in addition to having to cover the entire band, you now you have sound and lighting guy plus all their labor. And I normally show up to a wedding to set up about noon if it's a four o'clock start. I happened to get there a little early that day just because I wanted to shoot, you know, talk to the owner and one of their managers. And this it was like 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning. And you can tell the sound and lighting guy had been there since crack of dawn and weren't even near finished before the band showed up. And then they still had to set the room up around the sound and lighting for this. Because you're like you said, we don't take up as big of a footprint but now you've got to contend with the entire setup before guests get in the room and then get the room ready around that because there's so much gear going into it. And that goes to the other part of it is teardown. You know, teardown <laughs> for a band, you know, especially a big step like that, and let's say you have a bunch of roadies there and they have a truck wheel lift, it, it, it's it's hard. It, it, you know, again, you see these guys roll stuff in. And, and again, some of this stuff, some of that gear, if, if the company is doing sound, you know, what quality of equipment do they have? Again, we can control the quality of equipment we have 
we we know that you know we try to put our best foot forward and have and take pride in our setups. But again, I've I've seen some really crappy bands over the years uh, at venues uh, for weddings, and I've seen the hodgepodge. I've seen the all different set, setups, and I've seen some really good bands. I'm like, wow, they're they're really good. I hear them. They have some really good, talented singers and talented musicians. But I, I you know, perfect example here. Think about this for a second. Think of Metallica's one. Think of that song, beginning part of it. If you go past uh, the shooting in the game and you go further in and the guitar starts coming in, you can actually play that first part of it in cocktail because it's slow enough. And someone who likes Metallica, you can get that part to the guitar go and you can back out of that going to something else. And I've done that. You know, people who are Metallica fans done that, played Metallica one. If you're a band to try to get that, you couldn't do that. You couldn't just like not let you fade out. You couldn't just, you know, have it played at a light level that's not offensive. Because again, Metallica being a metal band, they got hit drums a certain way. They got hit guitar a certain way. They got hit bass a certain way. They got to do things certain ways. And it's 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 hard. So with that said, talking about uh, everything, uh, I want to talk about this uh, next subject. Hold on, buddy. I think I think a fair point that we need to make about the bands is like, you know, I think you've said it before. Not everyone's our client. You know what I mean? Like there's people that want that band experience. They want that for their wedding. They they want that for their special day. You know, I mean, and that's completely entirely up to them. And, uh, you know, being in a band for so long, struggling to book gigs and make a living off of it. I mean, I know where those guys are at, too. So my, I guess my overall attitude about the band versus DJ, I mean, it's always going to be a personal preference. But like you said before, not everyone's our client. And, yeah, that, that is very true. No, not everyone is your client. Not everyone is your customer. And you don't always want to – again, you're not going to get every single customer. Again – they may want another DJ. They may want, D, you know, DJ Mike James versus DJ Fire because DJ Mike James does this. DJ Fire does the do professional. And, and you guys are both friends. You guys are in the same market. You guys do uh, similar stuff. But again, they may pick one DJ over another. They may pick DJ Fire because he has a different light setup than you have or has this or has. Absolutely. And, and that makes different pe- things. And that's fine and great. I don't care if I lose it to a friend. I don't care if I lose it to another DJ or I lose it to a band. If that customer is not my customer, that then fine and great, no big deal. You know, I, I that that's fine. It, it is what it is. The thing I, you know, again, if I'm looking at what another band does, or what a band does, or another DJ does, we always learn to. I can't say sell against them, but understand the differences and inform the customer differences. Ultimately, right. it's the customer's decision. You know, again, you lead a horse to water, can't make them drink. And again, that's that's the analogy you got to look at. You talk to them, you 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 give them some knowledge, you you explain to them what you can do, and you never talk bad about the other services. You explain to them some of the pitfalls of it between a band and between yourself. Uh, next thing I want to go on to and talk about is something that actually happened to me this past weekend, and uh, I was talking about this earlier before the show. Uh, I got a, a text message from an event planner on Saturday uh, morning, late morning, uh, asking if it was available Saturday night. And this happened to be, we had no wedding Saturday night. And she goes, well, I know you don't normally do this, but I have a, a event. It's not a wedding. Uh, would you mind covering it? It's for uh, kids. It's a, a party for kids um, uh, for a cheerleading group. And uh, can you come and do you know music for this cheerleading group uh, for their party? Uh, the other DJ, I guess, backed out, uh, which to me, you know, it's, it's one of the things I look at and go, okay, no problem. We were available. Tracy and I, you know, I got a hold of Tracy. Tracy was out running errands. I told her, she said, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Let's let's help them out. Let's help the, you know, the kids out. And, you know, they had fun and enjoyed themselves. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, I wasn't looking to make, you know, <laughs> my normal pay because the fact that it was more or less helping, uh, you know, not only a friend out, but also making sure the kids had fun and just, you know, covering my, my, exp- my expenses. The, the thing is that what I'm looking at is the DJ. And this is something that I feel very strongly about. And I want to hear from you guys. Uh, DJs bailing on customers or dropping from customers saying, hey, 
I'm sorry, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, I can't do whatever the event is, fill in the blank, because of X, Y, Z. Uh, I know things happen, people get hurt, people get sick. And we should have backup plans. Again, that's having a relationship with other DJs, having friends, uh, having that relationship and saying, and make, start making phone calls. Because again, we want to fulfill and take care of the client. But the thing is that the question I have for you guys, and I'll start with Matt on this one. Um, DJs no call, no show, um, and don't show up for an event, or they uh, call in and say, I can't do it. Um, and someone calls you up and asks you to step in, for especially something you don't normally do. Do you step in and help them, or do you uh, try and help find another DJ that will fulfill their needs if you're available? Uh, I mean, if I'm available and the money's right, or at least makes it worth it, sure, why not? Um, now, if somebody's like, oh, DJ canceled, we need somebody for like three hours, and we're going to pay him 300 bucks, I'd say... Sorry, you're out of luck. Um, now, if it was like 500, 600, maybe I'll help them out because otherwise I'm going to sit at home and, and do whatever I was going to do on my Saturday night. But uh, I don't get too many of those. I hardly ever get them, actually. And usually if if I do get them, uh, their budget is that one or two hundred dollars. And that's because, you know, the DJ probably found a better paying job and bailed on. It. And uh, while that's unprofessional, uh, I would never do that but I also wouldn't charge that low of an amount anyway. So I always, I, I've never canceled on a client. I've only ever once had to have somebody fill in and that's because I was stuck on the freeway that got shut down because of a surprise rainstorm. And uh, I still found somebody and they were available and I didn't make any money on it. I just said, hey, here's the rate. Is that okay with you? I told the client they were fine. It worked out. Um, that's what you call act of God. Uh, <laughs> freeway impassable. Um, and I, they're, Otherwise, I would have been three hours late because you had to go an hour north, an hour east, and then an hour south just to get back to where you were. So uh, I'd never cancel on somebody. It's very unprofessional. Um, and in the today's day and age of reviews, uh, I mean, it's just you're guaranteeing yourself getting a bad review. But I'd help out if I could. Um, like I said, I like making money. I like DJing. And if, if both of those work out and... Sounds like a fun event. Why not? Now, if somebody's like, hey, uh, I need you to DJ a funeral, um, I might think twice about that. <laughs> well, there are cel cel celebrations of life. People do yeah. celebrations of life and have DJs come in. I've done a couple I've of never been to, I've never been. I've never been to a happy funeral. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> I just... <they> don't. <laughs> celebrations of life are a little different. There is You know, again, celebrations of someone's passing. But I, I've, done a, I've done a couple of them for people I know. Uh, and they want, you know, music, cocktail music, and they want to have music the person who passed enjoyed and share with you, as a family. I bet you I bet you, you don't play uh, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees at that one, do you? Uh, actually, I did <laughs> once because that's one of the songs they like. They like disco. So uh, that, was, that was on their list of their favorite songs. And like, I'm okay, sorry. You know? that, was, that was awesome, man. That was yeah. It, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. <laughs> Just play Thriller. Or I will survive, you know. Uh, uh, but you know, it, it's uh, I will survive. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, play the uh, theme song to The Walking Dead or something like that. Yeah, that's there's certain things now you don't do. But again, if, if there's something on their playlist that you have to play that they that, you know they enjoyed, they liked. Again, it's 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 their last celebration. Um, again, and that's where you work with the client, you work with the people, and make sure you do it tastefully. But I've done a couple of them and. Uh, you know, again, it, it, it's it's unique. Um, it is something that you do pay attention to what's going on because, again, you don't want to do certain songs, but it's hard. But, you know, what can you do? So, Mike, what about you? What do you think of the the DJ who bails and um, what happens if they called you? And if you had well, to. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that stuff happens around here a lot. You know, I mean, I don't know what reason it is. and I don't necessarily know the DJs that are doing it, but. I mean, I've got certain, I've been doing this so long in this area that I've got certain people that will refer people to me, you know, and if, if I'm open and I've got the date, you know, I'll pick up whatever we say, you know, I'll help somebody out, you know, somebody got COVID or whatever and they couldn't do it or, or the DJ was unprofessional, whatever it was. And, and around here, they like to do these benefit rides. So, you know, pe people call about those types of things too. And I do, I will charge them, uh, 
a, a lesser rate, you know, to do those types of things because they're there trying to make money. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, for whatever the cause is, like around here, there's one called Jeepin' for the Cure. And I think it's like four or five hours outside on a flatbed trailer, you know, with a tent over you. And you only make, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But, uh, I mean, wow, all those people that, I mean, we we're talking, there's like a thousand people there. And so to, to to draw better gigs or whatnot, sometimes I'll bite the bullet and do those events. And I don't have any problem doing it. You know, it keeps me working, keeps my name out there. And I think that that's, that's an important thing. It's like, again, my situation was is an event, uh, event planner I know, that, that Tracy I know. And we know her and she she's a really great person to work with. Uh, her daughter is in the group. Um, and <laughs> how, about the, how about these kids and take care of them? And again, something that we don't normally do, something we don't market for, wasn't a high paying thing. Uh, basically, just cover our costs, and that, that's what I was looking to do. I was looking to make this into a. I was looking to help a a cause, not to be, hey, it's time to make money and and be opportunists. So that's that's the other thing too. I, I wouldn't I I wouldn't say. Again, you need to charge what you, you need to charge. You need to charge a fair wage. Um, but the thing is, also, I looked at it, is that, hey, you know what? This is a, a nice thing to do to help her out and her group out and her daughter out and these kids. And they have something. They have someone. They have stuff. At the end of the night, they had fun. They enjoyed themselves. And they were screaming and singing along, scream singing to Taylor Swift all night. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, uh, DJ. I know you I, enjoyed it, too, buddy. I, well, I enjoy it because I saw the kids having fun, enjoying themselves, and that's that to me as a as a parent and as a grandparent. Yes, I'm a grandparent. As a, as a parent and a grandparent, and having a granddaughter that age, and remember our daughter that age. Um, to me, it's just an enjoyable thing to see those kids, and, you know, having fun, enjoying themselves. Uh, DJ Bradley, as a parent yourself, and have a daughter that would fit into that group there, who uh, probably would love to sit there. And I don't know if she's a big Taylor Swift fan or not. But is a dancer and has fun and does the crazy stuff. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about someone calling you up saying, "Hey, um, calling you up saying, hey, uh, can you do me a solid?" And uh, about the other DJ just bailing on that gig. I, if I'm free, I would automatically do it. It's not a thing about the money. It really is at that point. Um, because last year, like especially last year in this market, there were two DJ companies. I'm not going to call them out. One is seriously on the edge of going out of business now. One really isn't doing much of anything. But between the two of them last season, it was, if you look at the Driftless DJs page I curate, it's a Facebook group that every week I was putting it up there. All right, this person needs a DJ at this location. And it got to the point where on Monday, I would just start posting, who's available this week in case of emergency? And in that same stroke, I think I did one event where it wasn't even a wedding. It was some kind of just, you know, party of some kind at Myrick Park, and I'm like, which is a little, it's a cute little nature venue down the street from my house. And I'm like, sure, I'll be there in a couple hours. No problem. I don't even. Near where I go to soccer. Yes. And with that, I'm like, just pay my gas money. I don't care about anything else. I'll take care of this. And I'm like, oh, and feed my fat butt. And they're like, cool, we can do that. I I'm more than willing to work for food and, you know, beverage. That's fine for some things like that. Especially when, if because part of it is, if you're going to this venue, there's only certain caterers that they'll work with or allow on the door. And all the caterers are very kind of on the bougie side of it all. I'm down. But, yeah, anytime that comes up, if I'm not doing something, I will totally do it, even though, I mean, and I don't do kids' dances. I'm not a, just the special needs dances, but I won't do proms, eighth grade dances, graduation part. That's completely out of my wheelhouse. I'm the wrong DJ for it. But if it came to it, yes, I would and cover it for them, but I'm not going to go actively trying to find any. I mean, all you got to do is play, like, the most I know she's putting her two cents in and stuff and saying stuff, but we can kind of hear her a little bit. 
but it's 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 one of the things that I feel that as as a business owner again that's not what I try and go for. I try I I, I don't go for. But there are DJs who do you know school dance again. We had one here in a DJ round table. Um, you know uh, uh, he was on here and um, I do them. Um, who me? Them. Yeah, Mike. Does I do them. real. Do you see the do you see the problems I do? They're, they're massive. Matt does them. Uh, Braylon, do you do do you do proms right at the dead or? Um, I haven't necessarily done proms per se. Um, more of the school events that I've done have always been like middle school and below. But honestly, that's okay with me, and that's because I don't have the equipment to be able to provide for like a bigger high school prom. Um, like I don't have a good amount of subs. Twenty ones. Yeah, yeah, I don't have your your normal just. Fifty person wedding. Go. I don't have your fifty person we, we did, wedding setup, Matt. I we, don't have the fifty person. We did. Uh, <laughs> we did six hundred. We did six hundred kids on Friday with just the two dual eighteens and the two NXLs. See those things. Those things. We did a stereo sound. It, it was a weird venue, and I probably set it up the wrong way after thinking about it. But we had like two subs in each corner and two tops facing in, and they have a hundred degree dispersion, so it covered the outside area with some tapering. But then it made like right in the middle of the dance floor. It was like explosion of bass where the two sub just collided and it was yeah it was pretty nuts yeah it was fun though but i do them i just don't do the big stuff we'll say so i can handle you know just typical like middle school dances and stuff where it's not like close to like a thousand kids it's more of like a few hundred that's fine and you know one of the other things also is that uh Braylon, what if you ran into a situation like i ran into um what, what 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 do you what what do you feel is best for your business, and what would you do as a business owner? Yeah, no, I mean, I would if I'm available, and if I'm available, and there's enough time for me to get there and do all that, I would 100 percent do it. Um, personally, I'm the kind of person I like to be able to serve people where I can and help people out where I can. Um, but I mean, I've I've never had anything close to hey, we have an event tonight. Let's say it's like ten a.m. You get a text. I've never had that close to time. But it, I've had like week of like hey, our DJ just bailed. Blah blah blah. Can you help? Hundred percent. I'll do it if I'm available. Yes. Um. I mean, to me, I just want to help and serve and stuff like that. But the times, I mean, in maybe I don't I don't mean like anything by this, but the times that I've taken the opportunity to help and serve another group in that way, I've ended up having referrals done and I ended up getting booked for events because I was so helpful in that way. But that wasn't the reason why I did it. Like I didn't do it to be like, Oh, maybe I'll get something out of it. No, it was, I wanted to help them in their time of need, but I don't know, maybe it was just, just kind of like a blessing in that way that, Hey, because you did this, Here's an opportunity for you to grow your business even more. So you never know. And again, like like before, we worked with this uh, event planner before, and to me, it's 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 helping helping a friend out, helping someone out, helping those kids out, and they should not be punished because of that DJ being a um, less than scrupul uh, scrupul owner and just just doing that. Un his... Just unprofessional. He's just not. He's unprofessional. You yeah, know? Just doing that to them. It's like. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're a numbskull, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, it, it to me it's just sad, and you know, this this is why you know we love hearing all this stuff and hearing your your everyone's here's two cents. The other thing also, um, want to ask you with uh, especially a DJ, uh, uh, Midwest DJ Live and stuff like that. Uh, I know. Uh, Bradley was there, um, and he got to see some people, um, and he got to see stuff going on, some new gear, some uh, some uh, some information booth, you know, for information for products, but also some seminars on how to improve uh, certain things. And here's yes, no question of the night. If you had a choice or a chance to go to a, you know, NAM or whatever, and you can see you used this to, last week. I know this Nam was our question last week. <laughs> Matt was in the NAM. We, uh, we have his report on NAM. Um, There's no, you asked this question last week, the yes or no. What was it? 
it, it was the same thing. If you had a chance to go to a show, would you? No, no, no. It's not a, would you go to a show? Would you go to one at at one of these shows? Would you go to one of these classes at the show? Would you go oh, and okay. pay for one of those seminars? Matt, since you oh. were, where it doesn't now. Wait, time out, time out, time out. Do you pay to go to the to the class portion? Some of them, some yeah. Them charge. You, Usually it's like a lot of places. Nam's different. Nam is one flat fee. You access the whole show. Um, whereas the other ones, some of them are like, there's a show floor fee, uh, which is just to browse and get demos. And then there's another separate fee for like classes. Gotcha. So me, okay. a- absolutely not because I'm an expert and a genius and I know everything about this business. Uh, <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't think there's anything to gain from any of those. They're really great for maybe beginner DJs, but from the videos I've seen and the talks in there, and even just some of the marketing videos I've seen some of the guys do online, there hasn't been, like, I'll tell you this, the only thing I've really learned from, like, watching any of these DJs, like, whether it's DJ Bar or Jani or whatever, the only thing that useful that I've picked up on was from Nick Spinelli to bring Listerine strips to your event. That's probably the only thing that I've added to my arsenal watching these. Because a lot of the stuff that they're telling you, like, I figured all this stuff out way before... I, you know, became a professional DJ. And so a lot of these classes, like I'm pretty good at my marketing. I, I reach the right people. I get a lot of leads through Instagram. I get, uh, I probably close about 90% of my leads from the website. Um, I know how to sell. My dad was a, is an entrepreneur. You know, he's owned his own swing set and trampoline business doing that for 35 years and it's been successful. So I get some of his blood in me and uh, I've, just, I've always been very entrepreneurial and I'm sure there's maybe a thing or two thing here or there I could pick up on, but I wouldn't pay for the classes. Maybe I'd sit in on one for free, but I would I certainly wouldn't pay for them. Okay. I'll say this much. With Midwest DJs Live, it's a flat fee. It does if you buy early, it's super cheap. If you wait until the last minute, it's like two hundred bucks or something, but it gives you access to everything. The, the showroom floor, any of the classes you want, the whole nine yards. So that's yeah. the one reason I love that show in particular. So if you're going to the one in Vegas, yeah, you got to buy the pass. Then you want to do classes, you got to pay more. You want to do this. Midwest DJs Live is definitely about DJ education in a in a very like the nonprofit structure, so to speak. It's very informative, very helpful, but it's DJs putting it together to help other DJs. Which, like and like you said, yeah. If you'll take class, if you don't mind me answering, I, I took several. I took, I want to say, probably like twenty-five pages of notes over the last few days. I every class I took, and cert, like digital Dave's class about mixing programming, it was just reaffirmation of stuff I knew. Same with the SEO programming and training, and class they had. It was reaffirmation of things I'm already doing. But in every one of their classes, there was one, one something that might have been said. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You've just triggered a thought process. Me spending, you know, a few hundred bucks to trigger a few different thoughts and get some different ideas is totally worth it. I mean, th- this morning's, uh, they, they, I had a, I can't remember the guy's name about, but a comedian coming in to give ideas on how not to be a DJ while you're being an MC. It was a really interesting back and forth about it and how to, and it gave a lot of food for thought that when I go back to doing stuff, what am I going to apply or if if anything, but it's going to basically me think about how I'm approaching each aspect of being an MC, being a DJ. Am I, and plus the DJ show last night was insane. Uh, so it you, was you, feel, you feel the classes you feel the classes are well worth it going to a class at a yes. uh, at one of these shows. So Braylon, if you had a choice, if you had to go to one of the shows and you had to either pay extra for the classes, would you go to or if you knew it was free, would you go to some of these classes or some of these seminars? Um yes or no? Personally for me. 100 percent and the reason being is because that's more attractive to me than even like the showroom floors uh don't get me wrong 
is it cool to see gadgets and just like go in and see stuff like that and see the newest hottest stuff? Heck yeah, it is. I mean, that's sick. We're we're humans. that's all I want to see is the new. I'm about stuff. to say we're we're dudes. Like like a lot of us DJs, <laughs> we're dudes. We want to see like the coolest things and like, ugh, like touch it, hear it, smell it, see it, whatever. But for me, if I'm going to that, I'm viewing it as an opportunity to like what I like the two things I value even more than the showroom floors is one, the classes and like just be able to learn because I just want to learn whatever I can. I'm also younger. So like it kind of I just want to learn and grow as much as I can. But two, just like networking, not even networking with people necessarily even in my my area, but just like getting to know other DJs and just like keep in touch and just like kind of build that camaraderie. Um so one million percent, I would go. I, I would be going for the classes a lot of times, um, and the showroom floor and the extracurriculars and extra fun stuff would be kind of like the icing on the cake to be like, man, this is so cool. This is so fun. So that's, I would definitely go. Things, that's one of the things. Like that. This. That's you know one of the goals of this show is to have that touch with other DJs, other professionals like yourselves here, people in the chat, people watching later on YouTube, is having that that touch to them having that connection to other djs hear what other djs do and think and feel and so forth so on and i feel that that's an important thing of this show and of as a dj we should be building bridges with other djs learning and finding things out and knowing that matt only thinks anything apple is 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 golden everything else is trash <laughs> i'd say for me for like for for me like the more i can learn the more i can also give back to that's just kind of like my mindset with it like if i was able to get somewhere in my business and like my career as being a dj like i want to be able to take and give what i've learned help others like it's it you got to give it back that's the way i look yeah, and it. that that to me is an important thing is is growing yourself as a business growing yourself as a dj learning and as a dj you should always be learning how to do things and, you know, if you don't know how to do something, there, there's someone who does either on YouTube or, again, at one of these uh, conferences. I know here at uh, coming up soon is going to be Marquee. Uh, and if you haven't done your tickets yet, make sure you go to Marquee and get those tickets uh, quickly because Casey will sell very quickly. And it was good seeing uh, some pictures of Casey up there uh, yep. in, up there in Wisconsin. And uh, he also hung out with uh, Brian S. Red a little bit. And I, I saw some pictures with uh, – BSR and Casey and stuff like that. They were at the uh, the safe house up there in Milwaukee. We had a this, nice little cigarette smoking session outside the hotel at Brian, me and my business partner. There we're you go. 20 minutes is chain smoking. Well, yeah, uh, Brian is a, another smoker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Mike, you, sir, you want to wind this up for us. Would you go, if you had a chance to go to one of the seminars... Would you go to it, or would you say, no, I just stand on the floor and play with all the new gear? Oh, uh, I absolutely, I, I mean, I absolutely would. I mean, honestly, and it, I mean, it would depend on the content or whatever the seminar was or whatnot, but I'm, I mean, I'm just one of those guys, I, I mean, I'm, I just constantly, I'm a sponge, I'm constantly trying to learn and, and, and trying to do better and, and, and remembering from my mistakes and not making them again. And you know what I mean? And and learning new perspectives and new ways to do things and new ways to arrange the room or how to set up sound or whatever the seminar happens to be on. And I already kind of follow some guys on YouTube, you know, uh, that audio university and stuff like that, because I, I'm constantly, I mean, even though I've been in bands for, you know, eight years and DJing for 10, I mean, 18 years in the music business, I'm still trying to teach myself how to, you know, how to set up a room right and how to set up my mic skin and, and how to make everything perfect for the service that I'm providing. And th so that, to, that to me is an important thing to grow with a D as a DJ and having those opportunities and classes that, you know, uh, the, new went tech, to and the new tech that's constantly coming out. Like, and if you guys watch my YouTube channel, when I do some product reviews on, on evaluating tech and what marries up and what doesn't and why doesn't it do that? And how can we make it do it? And how can we get stuff to do what we want it to do? You know, so on and so forth. I mean, I am all about it. I mean, honestly, like if I could go through the list and just pick the classes I want, I'd be there for sure. That is great. And we already been through an hour already, guys. We got through an hour very quickly. It's always how fast we get through an hour here, and it's, it's great. Thank you. I want to thank you guys all for coming in, as always. And it's always great having uh, our friends here. Again, uh, unfortunately, Hunter is uh, away celebrating his uh, birthday. And again, we wish him a happy birthday. And happy birthday, as well, we got some makeup tips here tonight is from uh, 
DJ Brentley's uh, assistant. She's doing some <laughs> makeup tutorials. <laughs> it's um, skincare day. There you go. And you know, she's got to get caught up. I, again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Again, if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you go to the YouTube channels. You go to the social media for everyone here. All the links to YouTube channels are going to be down below in, in the description area. So make sure you go there. Follow the channel. Mike James does reviews. Matt does some really awesome gig logs. As well as the two guys next to me, DJ Brentley and uh, Bry uh, Brentley, they both do really great gig logs. So make sure you go and look at their channels and watch gig logs and stuff. Uh, I do some unboxings and reviews. I have some more unboxings coming up soon. And uh, we're, we'll get back to it. But again, thank you guys for checking in. Again, if you haven't done so, go to Twitch. Watch on, tw on Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time. Other than that, guys, you guys have a good night. Thank you all for checking in. All right. Good night, guys.